Blackadder, Series 1, Episode 2, Born to be King. In 1486, the second year of Richard IV's historic reign, and also the year in which the egg replaced the worm as the lowest form of currency, King Richard departed England on a crusade against the Turks. As the good Lord said, love thy neighbour as thyself, unless he's Turkish, in which case, kill the bastard. He left behind him his beloved son, Prince Harry, to rule as regent in his stead. Farewell, dear Harry. Farewell, father. And his slimy son, Edmund, to do the tasks most befitted him. Edward, my lord. My lord, with the king gone. Hmm? Of course, at last, a chance for some real power. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, now the theme song. The sound of hoofbeats cross the glade. Good folk, lock up your son and daughter. Beware the deadly flashing blade. Unless you want to end up shorter. Black and a black and a, he rides a pitch black steed. Black and a, black and a, he's very bad indeed. Black, his gloves of finest mole. Black, his codpiece made of metal. His horse is blacker than a vole. His pot is blacker than his kettle. Black and a, black and a, with many cunning plan. Black and a, black and a, you horrid little man. Okay. <laughs> Twelve months later. Edmund is on horseback with his sword raised in the air. He shouts, On! Onward! I want you scum back to the castle by sundown or you'll all be slaughtered! Onward! There! It's revealed that Edmund is actually speaking to a flock of sheep in heavy snowfall. Come on! Come on! Keep going! I've just about had enough of you! There! Shut up! There! They begin to run. Come on! No, not that way! Where are you going? Stop! Where are you going? No, no, no! Not away from the castle! Uh, shut up! We cut to the room in the castle. Harry, standing by a fire, reading a note. Splendid! Splendid! Edmund enters in the hallway. He's talking to his sheep who are trying to get into the castle. Now look, you're not, you're not supposed to be here! That's far enough! Now get out! Get out! He shuts the door and starts walking down the hallway, unaware of Harry's presence. If I could get my hands on that bastard brother, Harry. Ah, Edmund. Edmund stops dead in his tracks in surprise. Then, as if he hasn't been seen, continues to walk, continuing down the hallway, out of view, and then appears at the other end of the hallway through another door. Edmund? Ah, there you are. Splendid news, Edmund. Father's coming home. He writes here that he'll be back by St. Leonard's Day. Excellent. So we can celebrate both events together. Edmund, cold and shivering, tries to go to the fire, but uh, Harry pulls him away. Now then, I shall handle the visiting royalty, of course, uh, the guard of honour, uh, the papal legate, and you can, uh, well, you can sort out the frolics. The frolics? Yes, the Morris dancers, the eunuchs, and the bearded women. You know, the traditional St. Leonard's Day entertainments. Oh, damnation. Though I don't think I've had enough time to attend to the drains. Edmund, you'll have to look into those as well. Oh, uh, yes, fine, fine. I'd, I'd be honoured. Good. You won't let me down now, will you? No, 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 no. I know I'm, I'm really looking forward to it already. Thank you so very much. Splendid. Harry leaves. He goes. To, Edmund goes to the fire. Twelve months of chasing sheep and straightening the royal portraits and now this. The bastard. The bastard. Baldrick enters. If only he were, my lord. What? If only he were a bastard, my lord. Then you would be regent now. 
Uh, yes. And then, one day, Percy enters. You would be king, my lord. Ah, yes. Yes, I would be king. And then what? You rule the world, my lord. Precisely. It's just not fair, you know. Every other damn woman in this court has bastard sons, but not, not, not my mother. Oh, no. She's so damn pure, she'd hate to look down in case she notices her own breasts. Uh, you cut to the hallway outside the throne room. Edmund's mother, the Queen, is speaking to a Countess, Celia. You must be so looking forward to the King's return, Your Majesty. No. No, my lady, but think he will come to your chamber and make mad, passionate love to you. Yes, I wish he wouldn't do that. It's very difficult to sleep with that kind of thing going on, you know? Being used all night. It's like the outside of a sausage roll. And we've got the St. Leonard's Day celebrations to look forward to. The jesters, the jugglers, the great brown ox steaming and smouldering all night long. Oh yes, the feast! Sorry? No, I was thinking of something else. I particularly hope they've got the Morris dancers. I love them. Yes, I like the eunuchs. Uh, oh yes, the eunuchs! Oh, I wish I owned one. I wish I'd married one. We cut to Edmund's quarters. Edmund is speaking to a, a woman who was very apologetic. No, 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 fine, fine. It could have happened to anyone. No, never mind, never mind. Goodbye. The woman leaves and shuts the door. Oh, God, I don't believe it. We've only got one act and she shaved her beard off. There's always the eunuchs, my lord. Oh, yes, so the eunuchs and the amazing beardless woman. What a... Percy. There must be someone else. There must be. Uh, look. They look through loads of papers on a desk. Ah, there's the jumping Jews of Jerusalem, my lord. What do they do? They jump, my lord. What? They come in, my lord, and they jump a lot. It's a humorous act. There must be something else, surely. Ah, what's this? The death of the pharaoh. Sir Dominic Prick and his magnificent Rufinari uh, performed the tragic ancient Egyptian masterpiece, The Death of the Pharaoh. Well, that sounds funny. No, 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 no. I, I find that very moving, my lord. Well, it better be funny or Prick will get his comeuppance, I can tell you. Now, book him. Uh, my lord, what about Jerry Merriweather and his four chickens? What do they do? Lay eggs? Yes, my lord. Uh, oh. Uh, oh, all right, all right, all right, we'll have them, we'll have them. There's a knock at the door. Percy opens it to find a messenger holding out a note. My lord! Percy takes the note and slams the door in the messenger's face. He gives the note to Edmund, who opens it and reads it and closes it. What? What is it, my lord? The eunuchs have cancelled. Oh, dear. Ha! I should have known! Never trust a eunuch! What are we going to do? Well, I know what I'm going to do. Baldrick, give me an execution order. I'm going to teach them a lesson they'll never forget. I'll remove whatever extraneous parts of their bodies still remain. Edward writes out an order, goes to the door, opens it. The messenger's still there, and he thrusts it into his hands and he shuts the door again. Take that to the... Well, before he shuts it, he says, Take that to the Lord Chancellor, thank you. Then he sh shuts the, the door. Oh, God, this is Desperate. Desperate. We could have the Morris dancers, my lord. Now look, we are not that desperate. Morris dancing is the most fatuous, tenth-weight entertainment ever devised by man. Forty effeminate blacksmiths waving bits of cloth they've just wiped their noses on. How's it still going on in this day and age? I'll never know. Uh, sorry, do you want them or not? Edmund starts whacking Percy over the head with a piece of paper just as Harry enters. Ah, Edmund! Edward begins jumping and hitting Percy and everyone starts joining in and doing it as if it's a, a Morris dance itself. And rest. Oh, splendid. And how are the rest of the entertainments coming along? Oh, they're, they're very, very well indeed. Um, I think it's going to have a slightly Spartan look. What, Greek? Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, yes, I'm Greek. Oh, good. Oh, good. Everyone turning up. Oh, absolutely, everyone. Oh, so many people, in fact, I'm afraid I've had to let the eunuchs go. Oh, no, 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 no. No? 
No, that won't do at all. Not on St. Leonard's Day. Because, well, correct me if I'm wrong, Lord Percy, but uh, St. Leonard himself was a eunuch. Uh, Edmund, behind Harry, shakes his head no. To which Percy says, Yes, that's right. <laughs> Edward goes to threaten uh, him by hitting his own head and then Harry turns around so he starts doing it again and rest. But that's what I thought. But it might be more tactful if... Oh, no, 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 no. To leave out the eunuchs on St. Leonard's Day would be like, well, would be like leaving out the Morris dancers or the bearded women. Edwin, Percy and Bullshit all pretend to laugh. <laughs> Besides, Lord Dougal Macangus, the King's Supreme Commander, is expected at the feast. And as you know, eunuchs are his particular favourite. Hmm? He's Scottish, you see. Ah. Good, good. Well, I'm relying on you, Edmund. Carry on. Harry leaves. So, some carrot-faced fissile-ass Scottish orangutan wants a eunuch, does he? Apparently he's a great warrior, my lord. Yes, that's what they all say, those Scots. They're just barbarians. Half of them can't even speak English. Well, what do they speak? I don't know. It's all Greek to me. They speak Greek. No, I mean it sounds like Greek. Well, if it sounds like Greek, it probably is Greek. It's not Greek! But it sounds like Greek. What's not Greek that sounds like Greek? That's a good one, my lord. Look, it's not meant to be a brain teaser, Percy. It's simply telling you that I cannot understand a blind word they're saying. Well, no, no wonder, my lord. You've never learned Greek, of course. Percy, have you ever wondered what your insides look like? Sometimes, my lord, yes. He holds up a knife. Then I'd be perfectly willing to satisfy your curiosity. Is that clear? Is it? Oh, my God, this Scotsman's beginning to annoy me already. I'm the Duke of Edinburgh, you know. And Laird of Roxburgh, Selkirk, Selkirk and Peebles. I can make things very difficult for him. As for these entertainers, uh, I don't know. Baldrick, you've got a beard. Go and get yourself a nice dress. Oh, great, my lord. And Baldrick leaves. Percy, you better go and get Bernard the Bear Baiter. Yes, my lord. Uh, look, 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 looks like we'll be needing him. Oh, and Percy. Yes, my lord. Tell him to bring a bear this time. Percy leaves. The improvising last year was pathetic. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're in the dining room. Harry stands. Now then, mother, a toast to father's return. Suddenly fanfare happens. Woo! Enter a man on horseback wearing a horned helmet. What the devil? Then he realises who it is. It's McCangus! A queen is very excited. McCangus dismounts and removes his helmet, giving it to a guard. Then a, cu then a couple of bags from his horse he takes and approaches the table. Noble Harry, Prince of Wales, Dougal McCangus greets you and lays at your feet the spoils of an enemy at war. He dumps the contents of a bag on a table which has a severed human head and body parts. Oh, sorry, that's my overnight bag. He dumps the other bag on the table, which has Turkish goblets and, and trinkets. Behold, treasures torn from the bowels of the Turks. Oh, Macangus, it fills me with joy and hope to see you. They shake hands firmly. What news of my father, the king? Well, last I saw him, he swore he was back for the feast of St. Leonard, or die in the attempt. God forfend, we shall pray for his safe return. Join us, join us, you must be starving. McCangus, and Jan Luckerbur. Harry looks towards the doorway, expecting someone to walk in. Oh, yes, and him too. Come on, Luckerbur. He leads his horse to the table, and the, the horse starts to eat from it, uh, which shocks the queen. You must be the king's wee bit of rumpy pumpy, eh? I am the queen. Aye, aye, listen, I got a message for you. My father asked me to send his regards to you. Do I know him? Oh, I think you can say that, yes. He's Donald McCangus, third Duke of Argyle. Oh! Very shocked. Uh, there is extremely poor fanfare. Edmund enters, sneering at the trumpeteer. Ah, Edmund, there you are. McCangus, this is the man who's providing the entertainments for us tomorrow. Ah, the eunuch. He hands Edmund a coin. Here's a groat for your trouble. Uh, I am not a eunuch. You sound like one to me. <laughs> I am not a eunuch. I am the Duke of Edinburgh. Oh, yeah, are you? <laughs> yes. 
Same old story, eh? The Duke of Edinburgh is about as Scottish as the Queen of England's tits. Eh, oh, sorry. Uh, me phrase, Your Majesty. I'm sorry, you're in my chair. Don't apologise. Uh, 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 Edwin gets down on his knees instead of sitting on any other remaining chairs. Just so he could be at the table still. Harry stands holding a large document. Well, now we've all got to know each other, I have a rather special announcement to make. Don't tell me you're a eunuch as well. Macangus, as reward for your heroic deeds in battle, my father here empowers me to grant you anything that you may desire of me. If he's got any sense, he'll ask for a haircut. My lord, my lord, I'm honoured. All I ask for you is a scrap of land. Grant me a fair Selkirk and a noble sire of Roxburgh. What? Very well, by the power invested in me... Uh, excuse me, um, I'm sorry to dip my little fly in your ointment, but uh, do those lands do in fact belong to me. So? Well, so perhaps... Perhaps you'd like to choose somewhere else. Macangus? No, no, I'll have Roxburgh and Selkirk. But that leaves me with Peebles. Oh, aye, and Peebles. But, 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 but are you trying to say something, Edmund? Well I, do, well, I don't know. I mean, some people might say, well, what an absurd idea, giving half of Scotland to a kilted maniac for slaughtering a cup of syphilitic Turks. McCangus reaches across the table and grabs Edmund. Au contraire. I say, let's reward him. Good, good, so be it. ha, 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 ha. Uh, Angus and, and uh, uh, Harry uh, shake hands. Uh, Hooray! Cut to Edmund's quarters. Baldrick is in a dress and a wig, twirling around in front of Percy, who nods. Uh, Edmund enters. I'm going to kill him! I'm going to kill him now! Who, my lord? That stinking Scottish weasel! Why, my lord? Because he's a thieving stinking Scottish weasel, that's why! He goes to get a knife. How? I'm going to stab him! Where? In the great hall and in the bladder, he begins to sharpen the knife. But if you do it in front of everybody, won't they suspect something? Ah, yes, a drawback. Yes, perhaps we need something a little more cunning. I have a cunning plan. Yes, perhaps, but I think I have a more cunning one. Well, mine's pretty cunning, my lord. Yes, but not cunning enough, I imagine. Well, that depends how cunning you mean, my lord. Well, pretty damn cunning. How cunning do you think I mean? Well, mine's quite cunning, my lord. All right, then, let's hear it. Let's hear what's so damn cunning. Right, well, first of all, you get him to come with you. Oh, yes, very cunning. Brilliantly cunning. I ask him to come with me and then, then stab him, perhaps. How cunning can you get? No, no, my lord. You get this enormous great cannon. Oh, I see. I take him outside, get him to stick his head down a cannon and then blow it off. Blow it off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, Baldrick, that's... That's a wonderful idea. No, I think I have a plan that will give us a little more entertainment. <laughs> Edwin looks out the window and sees McCangus leave. He goes outside and finds a woman riding a horse, saddle, uh, side saddle. He bows to her in greetings, then grabs her feet and pushes her off the mount. He then grabs the horse and follows the Scotsman, who is out for a hunt. <laughs> Edward sneaks up behind him while he's uh, skinning, um, skinning a rabbit, I think. Um, but he gets caught in one of McCangus's animal snares. Ah! He ends up hanging upside down behind Behangus. Can I help you? Uh, um, no. No, no, I'm fine. Thank you. Good. He just starts back out of swinging up, upside down from one foot, hanging in the background. I'm not in your way over here, am I? Nope. Oh, uh, it's just, uh, it's just one thing. Uh, I was wondering if you could do me a little favour. McCangus finally stands up and turns to Edmund. Uh-huh. Uh, I was wondering if you'd like to help with the celebrations tonight. How? By staying away, do you mean? <laughs> McCangus raises his axe. Ah! And he chops the rope and back out of falls to the floor. That kind of dusts himself off. Uh, uh, well... Uh, the, th the thing is, um, we were hoping to present a mystery play by one of our leading thespianic troops. Um, but unfortunately, uh, one of their numbers is ill, and I thought you'd be the perfect person to uh, take his place. Well, I warn you. 
Uh, he kills a badger. A no actor. Well, there shouldn't be much acting required. Akangas tosses uh, uh, the corpse uh, to one side. Ah, it's an ancient, uh, it, it's an ancient Egyptian piece uh, called the Death of the Scotsman. I'll have a crack at it. He throws a knife, and and uh, we hear a creature die off screen. You uh, you could play the Scotsman if you like. Uh, who 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 dies at the end of the play? Oh, acting dead. Now that I can do. Yes, well, as I say, there there may not be much acting required. <laughs> oh, uh, mind the weasel pit. Back out of steps forward. Ah! Falls into one. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. Uh, we cut to the entertainments. Uh, the jumping Jews are jumping. Uh, all at different rhythms. Um, Harry and the Queen look very bored. Edmund takes a bit of cloth backstage and checks that no one is looking, then replaces the fake sliding knives for the for the real ones, which are wrapped in a similar cloth. After wrapping up the fake knives, he whispers to Percy, who takes the cloth of fake knives away. Then Edmund tests the real knives by sticking one into a table, but he's unable to pull it out again as much as he, he tries. He turns around, hiding the real knife that's now stuck in the table, as Prick and his uh, woofaroonies arrive, waving their arms in the air. Ooh! Ooh! Tall trees, let's see those branches. Come on, waving and swaying in the breeze. Taller, taller, taller. Now smaller, smaller, smaller. Come on now. They're all getting a little crouching. Small trees, very small. Okay. Ah, Sir Dominic, have you made the uh, necessary changes? Yes, my lord. Edward finally pulls the knife out, uh, but propels him into Prick and the Wolfaroonies, uh, but he manages to still uh, conceal the knife um, as Bacangus enters the room, wearing a pharaoh's headdress and carrying an, an Egyptian um, cane thing. You know, those little ankh symbol things. Uh, like a staff, I suppose, but a very small one. Um, ah, Bacangus, uh, meet your murderers. Uh, they all start doing a woo -woo! At this point, the jumping Jews come off stage uh, with one clap. Um, uh, as they pass by the Wufaroonies, uh, one of them says, How did it go? Um, and one of them takes off his beard and says, uh, Not bad, but, uh, you know, I don't really think they understood it. Okay. Um, they sheathe their knives, which are obviously the real ones. Um, they're all they're all testing their lines together. Uh, we cut to Harry and the Queen. What is a Scotsman doing? Oh, actually, no, this is the start of the play. Okay, they skipped ahead a bit there. Okay, um, so now they go up on stage, uh, Prick and, and the Wooferoonies. With most bold intent, here be thee of graceful Nile, where camels ride and deserts blow, to spill the blood of this Scotsman vile. And then we cut to the Queen. What is a Scotsman doing in Egypt? I'm not sure, but apparently they've had good reviews. We cut backstage. You see your mother there. I met my father on my way back to France. Apparently you and your mother used to, uh, you know, hey, hey. Look, don't be absurd. Such activities are totally beyond my mother. My father only got anywhere with her because he told her it was a cure for diarrhea. Don't you believe me? I got some letters I took and, my God, they're hot stuff. I tell you, they certainly cast a wee shadow of doubt over the patronage of young Harry for a start. Look, don't be absurd. What? What would you say? Silence. This is uh, the, the people on stage. Silence. Listen, a bagpipe strums. Behold, this way our victim comes. For never there was a tyrant. We cut backstage again. Oh, that's my cue. I'm on. Letters? Letters? Where are these letters? They're safe we're hidden away. I'll show you them later. He goes onto the stage. Oh, all right. Uh, oh, no, wait. The shadow of yonder mighty Fenness. Tutu Carmoon McPherson. <laughs> you, you come not awake too soon, for this is not the weather fair for this, the Ides of June. <laughs> uh, someone in their head just shakes their head. Someone in the audience just shakes their head. It's horrible. Uh, Hey, it is. What business do you mean? Edwin's is desperately frantic backstage. He comes up behind Percy and Baldrick, who are watching the play, eagerly awaiting the murder. Quick! Oh my God! Macangus is going to die! And not a moment too soon. Carrot faced orangutan, thieving Scots weasel, death to the Scot! No, no, no! Look, he knows too much. 
That is why he must die. No, he mustn't. He mustn't. He has vital information. I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? Uh, stop the show, my lord. Uh, how? How? Uh, just say stop. What's our reason? What's our reason for stopping the show? Because the knives are real and Macangus is just about to get killed. Oh, you bastard! He picks up the knife and stabs Percy, but it's one of the fake ones. He then gets an idea. Go on, my lord, quick! Edmund hurriedly, hurriedly puts an Egyptian uh, cloth over his head. No, just, he wraps in just normal cloth to look like a pharaoh's uh, uh, garment. And he prances onto the stage um, dramatically and stabs Macangus. Oh, no, he says, stop! Sorry, I'm late! And he stabs Macangus with the fake knife. Nothing happens. Then Edmund stabs him again. And then Edmund pushes Macangus so that he actually goes down. Oh, I... Oh, ah! Harry is extremely bored. The only man who shook his head earlier and one woman applauds very slowly. And so it's quite an effort to applaud something that was so awful. Um, okay, so now we cut backstage. Uh, we cut to later in the evening. Macangus is showing the letters to Edmund. <laughs> Good. Excellent. It's certainly my mother's handwriting. When did you say they were written? Uh, 1460. The year my brother was born. Uh, uh, uh. Baldrick, get in here. Baldrick comes in. Baldrick, get out there and tell everyone that the rest of the entertainments have been cancelled. Why? Why? Because I told you to, you silly little rat. No. no why have they been cancelled, my lord? Oh, I see. Uh, tell them I have a very important announcement to make. Does that mean I have to take the dress off? Oh, get out, get out, get out, get out, 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 out. As Baldrick leaves, Macangus reaches behind Baldrick's legs from behind in order to give him a grope. You know, if you have played your cards right, you could be king. Ah, yes. One day. Ah, sooner than you think, maybe. The last time I saw your father, he just changed... Uh, he just charged into Constantinople when they shut the gates on him. Oh! Yes, 10,000 of the Turks were there, armed with smiters, and your father with a small knife for peeling fruit. Edmund could barely contain himself. <laughs> Back at the entertainment, a man on stage shoes away four chickens who have just laid eggs. Jerry Merriweather, another nail in the coffin of variety. I liked Bernard the Rabbit better, though. Edmund arrives on stage with Percy and McCangus. Thank you, thank you. Look, Edmund, is this announcement going to take long? I haven't seen hide nor hair of a eunuch yet. Oh, don't worry, Harry. It will soon all be over. My dear mother, my dear brother, lords and ladies of the court, today there came into my possession from the hands, my lord, of your faithful servant, Dougal McCangus, certain letters, rather extraordinary letters, concerning the lineage of Prince Harry. L -l letters What is so extraordinary about them? Letters? Well, Harry, they were written by your mother to your father. Oh! <laughs> your father, Harry, being, of course, Donald for Duke of Argyle. <gasps> Sudden shock. I beg your pardon. These letters are of quite an intimate nature. Let me give you an example. He takes one from Percy, who mouths the words as Edmund reads them. Arundel, Thursday, my dear Harry Wary, often when you sit at table with my husband, probing deeply into the affairs of state, I long for the day when you will probe deeply. <gasps> Edward, are you sure you know what you are saying? As sure as our mother was, Harry, when she wrote these words. Dear big boy, sail south. As you know, your galleon is always assured of warm welcome in my harbour. Big boy, mother, do you know anything about this? What chance did I have? I was just a little foreign girl. Then I must renounce the regency and hire me to a monastery. Edmund, you shall be regent until your father returns. The king will not be returning. What? Oh dear. The queen smiles as she says it. No, when Angus last saw him, he was facing half the Turkish army, armed with only a small piece of cutlery. So, Percy, if you'd like to start things off. He goes to stand where Harry was sitting. Percy, standing on a table. The king is dead. Long live the king. The king is dead. Long live the king. Probably dead. Uh, 
uh, uh, the king is probably dead. Long live the king. The king is probably dead. Long live the king. Then the actual king enters. The king is not dead. Long live the king. It, oh, Mr. Clean wants me to hydrate there. Good job. <laughs> Thank you very much. Everyone cheers as the king enters. Percy gets down from the table. Blood! Death! War! Rumpy Pumpy! Triumph! He tosses his lance down when he sees McCangus. McCangus! They embrace. My companion in blood and most trusted friend. You made it! I made it! Thanks to my trusty fruit knife! Ha 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 ha! Then he sees Edmund. Wait a minute! He climbs onto a table. What's going on here? Who are you? He's our son. What? Oh yes, of course. Enid. My beloved father, certain letters have come to light which might change things a bit around here. Letters? What letters? They speak of acts of love between your wife and Donald the gay dog of the glens. How I long to be in the kingdom between the saffron sheets where you and your ruler are the only ruler. As he reads aloud. And then acts of love consummated. Oh, you enormous Scotsman, etc. And these letters are dated November and December 1460. Which, Harry, in relation to your date of birth, is precisely nine months after I was born. What about nine months before your birth, Edmund? You bastard! No, I think you're the bastard, Edmund. Ah, <laughs> everyone laughs. Silence! I want an explanation. Uh, uh, my, my liege, uh, the reason I have gathered you all here today... Uh, he gathers all the letters up and quickly and approaches McCangus. Is, tried, is to try to get some proper justice meted out against this Scottish turd who has clearly forged these obviously fake letters. Let me see them. No, I ripped them up in his face so that no hint of their filthy slander can remain. He rips them up and he tosses them in a fireplace. He then runs back to McCangus. You come in here fresh from slaughtering a couple of Turks when their backs were turned and you think you can upset the harmony of a whole kingdom? I challenge you... To a duel! To the death! Um, yes, all right. Excellent, after the, uh, excellent idea! After all, it is St. Leonard's Day! There's meant to be some entertainment! Ha 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 ha! He climbs down to them. Good! Very good! Take your places! Edmund and McCangus go to the opposite ends of the stage. Edmund clearly muttering a prayer. Uh, the king goes to McCangus and rubs his lucky fruit knight along McCangus's sword. It is nice to see old Glen! Again, eh, McCangus? And the human shish kebab. And he thrusts his sword straight up. And the king laughs. Ha, 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 ha. How can I ever forget? Very well. Let the killing begin. Edmund draws his sword. And he starts waving it about, trying to look skilled. Someone, someone rolls their eyes at one of the tables and sighs. As soon as Edmund moves one step forward, McCangus swings his sword in one, one, one step and slices the blade clean in half. So, the, so he just ends up looking at a little small broken sword. Let's see the black out of wriggle out of this one. He puts his sword to Edmund's neck. Uh, look. Come on, what's the hold up? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you everything I own. Everything. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm hardly a rich man. You're hardly a man at all. <laughs> but, 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 but my horse must be worth a few thousand ducats. I can, I can sell my wardrobe, the pride of my life. My swords, my curtains, my socks, and my fighting cocks. My servants I can not I can live without, except perhaps he who oils my rack. The king yawns. And then my most intimate treasures. My collection of antique codpieces. My wigs for state occasions. My wigs for private occasions. And my wigs for, <laughs> for humorous occasions. And my collection of pokers. My grendel stretchers. My ornamental, my ornamental pumphreys. And of course... My autograph miniature of Judas Iscariot. McCangus turns to the crowd and laughs. Ha ha ha! Let's do a wear near enough! McCangus prepares to thrust the sword into his throat and Edmund covers his face. Ah! But then McCangus lowers his sword. 
I'm only kidding. Actually, I'm quite interested in the wigs. Well done. Well done. Hey, I hope life doesn't become too dull now that you won't be able to pass laws over Scotland. Edmund, as he leaves, I wouldn't pass water over Scotland. Okay, we cut to a room outside the throne room. The king is looking out the window bored. We're all terribly pleased you're back, father. I'm not. I miss the smell of blood in my nostrils and the queen's got a headache. Oh dear, but we do have a fascinating week ahead. In fact, the Archbishop of York has asked me if you'd care to join his formation Italian dance class, and I really ought to give him an answer. Do you want me to be honest or tactful? Uh, tactful, I think. Tell him to get stuffed. Ah, right. Has the little hooligan the Kangos left? Uh, no, Edmund's giving him a last look around the castle now. We cut outside to the top of the castle. Edmund shows McCangus the view from an archer's battlement, then turns away. While this, and he shows McCangus a cannon. We cut back to the king and Harry. Well, I'll be sorry to see him go. Back on the roof. <laughs> McCangus has got his head inside the ca cannon now. Ah, very interesting. Edmund moves to behind the cannon. We go back inside. Yes, and so will Edmund. They become firm friends. We hear a loud boom. What the devil? The Turks! The trains! Edmund runs in. Father! Hurry! There's been a rather messy accident. You must come quickly. Oh my god, I shall need my plunger. Harry runs off, followed by the king. Edmund then jumps in the air for joy as it freezes. And there we go. That is the full episode of the Black Adder.